Hi, my name is Norma and I'm recording from Johannesburg, South Africa. And today I'll be talking about the 10 summer patterns that I designed this year. So this is the most that I've done in the summer. Somehow I normally just have a few summer pieces and I'll be mainly working on the winter and the uh, fall pieces. But this year I decided to do more summer items because I've been working towards building my capsule wardrobe and putting in as many pieces that I need as I possibly can. So I designed 10 pieces this year and I'll be sharing the details, the yarns and how it's like getting to wear them. So um, the first one that I'll talk about is the Noyolo vest that I'm wearing right now. So this is the Noyolo vest. And it's one of my favorite pieces. I think it's the one that I've worn the most, even though we're still in winter at the moment. So um, this vest is knit with African expressions. Harmony It's an iron weight yarn. And I chose the color uh, 2000 because I wanted it to have a very uh, springy or summery color that could really fit well in the season. So mostly I normally do grays and uh, shades of brown, but I wanted a very light color for this one. And I think that's the approach that I took for most of the pieces that I did this summer. And um, it's a very simple and easy one to wear. I've worn it with skirts with pants and colorful shirts underneath or even a plain white as I'm wearing it right now. So it's really been a great one to wear. So the top is worked, uh, the vest is worked from the top down and it's got a, a crew neck and a double folded collar. Please don't mind the makeup stains from this weekend, this past weekend. Um, so um, it's worked with the eye cut aging already included so you don't get to pick up the stitches and do the the sleeve opening at the end of the pattern you work it right as you're going through as you're knitting the body so the only finishing that you have to do is to just pick up stitches for the uh, neck bend and just work the length fold it over and uh, knit it and sew it down for the double uh, finish so it's a very simple and easy and fun one to knit it's just gutter stitch so it's mindless and the yarn is quite thick i used 4.5 millimeter needles or us size 7 for this one so it worked up pretty fast and it's really added such an interesting dimension to my wardrobe because i can throw it over a lot of things and it does provide some warmth. So I had mentioned something about this in the uh, past video that I've done, that um, our summers here in South Africa tend to be hot and wet. So we get, uh, the summer is when we get our rains mostly. So whenever it rains, it tends to get quite uh, chilly, whether it's during the day or in the evenings, but it's not so cold that you want to wear a thick cable sweater perhaps so um it's it's very important to have some pieces like this that you can just throw over some long sleeved top or dress and get on with your day or your evening without feeling the need to put on something really thick uh, that's how our climate is on the side so that's that was the main motivation for working on this particular vest because I wanted a piece that I could throw over different items and still get some warmth. Right now we're in winter and I, I'm wearing this and just the top, but um, I'm feeling quite okay at the moment with the outfit. So this is the Noyolo vest. And then the next piece that I'll talk about is another vest. Um, this is the Lumelo vest. So it's V-necked and it's got this interesting check checkered pattern so um with this one i wanted a v-neck vest so i could wait even with a top like this slightly or with the buttons undone and it would really still sit well and um it's a very simple one to knit even though it looks a bit complicated so i wanted this checkered pattern but i didn't want to do stranded color work because it's a it's meant for the summer and I didn't want a heavy vest. So what I did with this vest was to do the striping 
and uh, there were pearl stitches here where you see the vertical lines so it was just striping with some pearl rows it's, it was a very simple one and a very quick one to knit and then it, afterwards I used some surface crochet technique to crochet these vertical lines so it doesn't take too much time I think it took a day to do the entire vest and um, the lines go uh, vertically like this and it really has a very nice finish and it's very light because you are not stranding the color work it's just the lines like this okay as you can see the inside so this one is has got a deep v-neck and some deep sleeves so um, I forgot to mention that with the first vest, it's very it's a straight, it's sort of like a drop sleeve uh, vest. And this one has got some sleeve shaping. So it's quite an interesting and a relaxing one to knit. So on this vest, I used African Expressions Charmed. Okay, no, no, it's not Charmed, it's Enchanted. So it's a DK weight yarn. It's undyed, so that's the natural color. And then I, with for the striping, I used African Expressions Joy, and the color is 1039. It's a nice light gray. So that's the female of vest. And then the next pattern that I did for the summer was the New Town Show. So this is a one skein show. It's quite large for a one skein pattern and it's trapezium shaped so for this one i used pearl soho linen quill and the color is gray denim so um i worked this one starting with the triangle in the center so it's just worked right from the top point here and increases are worked right to the points somewhere here so what I did was that after working the triangle, the stitches on the sides are put on hold and then the lace pattern is worked uh, for each side separately. So um, what I love about this technique, particularly when you're working with a single skein of yarn, is that once you work the center triangle, you weigh the remaining uh, ball of yarn and then you split it into two equal parts. So what I normally recommend is that you make one slightly larger than the other. I think um, I had about 70 grams left after doing the center triangle. And I did the other one at around, instead of doing 35 grams each, I did 37 and 35. And I started, I first worked with the smaller one so that I could do as many pattern repeats as I could. So that by the time I started working on the second one, I knew that I had enough yarn to work on it and finish without running out whilst the other side is much larger than the other so it's a very um interesting technique of working this particular uh, style of pattern because you maximize your yarn usage when you're working with a single skein so um linen cool is quite a large skein i'll include the yardage uh, in the notes below and that's why the show was quite large some skeins may be smaller and it may not necessarily get to the size but you'll still get a reasonably sized show and i really love this one so i named it the newton sorry new town show because the way this show is shaped this triangle and the lines reminded me of the nelson mandela bridge that's in newtown a suburb in johannesburg so that's where the name of the show came from and then the next one is uh, the Zimkita top so the name Zimkita means they are lovable and it's a closer name so this is a very simple uh, strappy top so I designed this one because I wanted something that I could wear under blazers or under cardigans when it's not that cold and it just shows underneath or on very hot days to, uh, I'll just be happy to wait on its own. So initially, I wanted to do something different with this yarn. I wanted to design a show because I've had this yarn since 20, 
2018 or early 2019, I've had it for quite a while. So, but when I started working on the show, I realized that it really felt so good. The yarn was really soft and nice, but I didn't want to knit something that I won't wear as often as a garment. Okay, even if I was going to wear it quite a lot, most probably. But um, I felt I needed to do something much bigger than just a, a show because it's quite a beautiful yarn. So I used Sweet Georgia's um, Cash Silk Lace. So it's a blend of cashmere and silk. And honestly, it's the nicest feeling yarn I've ever used. It's so soft and it feels really good. Um, but I really struggled working on this top because I don't generally work with wooden needles. I've only got the metallic ones and the yarn was so slippery. I remember I, I had wound the yarn into a cake, but I had to redo it and make and turn it into a bowl, a really firm bowl so that it doesn't fall apart because that's what was happening. So that was my struggle. So I didn't work as fast as I thought I would because I I, I was working at a spot weight gauge because even though this is a lace yarn, I was working on it held double throughout. So every single section of this garment is worked with the yarn held double because it's a lace weight yarn. Um, so I had expected that it would be very fast, but it wasn't because the yarn was slipping on my needle. So what I would recommend is that if you're knitting s with a yarn like this and you're like me and you're only on... Um, metal needles it will be best to just invest in a pair of um, wooden needles your knitting experience will be much more enjoyable so um, I worked on this from the bottom up because I mean even if you work from the top down you are still working the same shape uh, just this and I also added some elastic on this one because I wanted it to be really firm so I think with some yarns that may not necessarily be necessary unless if you want to exclude the straps. But because I felt that the yarn was too soft and too drapey, I just wanted to add something that would give it more stability. So I added an elastic band at the top and the straps are just one one by one ripping. And they were very stretchy. So um, that's the other thing to consider as well. So I've given the measurements of how long you can make them but it's very important to just work to a certain length and attach them with a safety pin or something, try on the top and see if it, this, it's not too long or too short, but mostly the problem that you'll encounter is making them t a bit too long. So it's very crucial to just try on the top as you go, as you are making the strips before you bind off and stitch them onto the garment. So um, on this top, I used this simple striping pattern um i worked from the bottom up so the stripes are thicker in the contrast color and as you get to the top the main color takes over and the contrast color stripes get thinner so i just like the way this striping technique looks i love stripes and i really enjoy experimenting with how i can work the stripes and make them look different each time there's another stripe top that i'll be sharing later and it's going to be totally different from this one so i really love this one and i'm enjoying wearing it i've worn it only once though because it's been quite cold so um i'm looking forward to wearing it in the summer we're getting into summer in the next few months and then um that was the Zim zimkita top and then the next one that i want to talk about is the mbali top so this one was inspired by the Mbali socks. I did them, uh, I think, a year or two ago. And it uses this very simple flower motif. So the name Mbali means flower. And it's here at the bottom as well, just before changing color to the darker, to the darker shade. So I'm really loving this top as well. It's a circular yoke, and it's worked from the top down. And I also love the neck bend here as you can see it's got some tubular cast on and then it's got this double knitted band that makes the neckline look much neater and give it a much nicer finish so 
and I, I, I mainly did this because the, the top was just going to be plain knitting until you get to the flower motif. So I wanted, since most of the time when people look at you, they see the neck area. So I wanted the neck to really look very pretty, even though the top is going to be a bit plain for a while before you get to the flower so that, um, you know, it just has some appeal to it. And this is how it looks right down to the bottom. So um, for this top, I used blue sky fibers and the yarn is Skyland. And it's got some silk content and it, I think it's 30% silk. And it's also nice and drapey and it's got a little sheen to it. It's really beautiful. So the colors are Lunar Eclipse and uh, the light color is Crescent Moon. So I really love this one as well and it's also a bit on the warmer side it's not exactly your 100 percent super hot day summer top it's quite warm but i've noticed that you know there we we get some days that are really hot where you can't really wear something like this but for the most part it can be worn and comfortably so So um, the next one that I have here is the Nandi top. So I did a Nandi pull over some years back. I think that was 2019. And it was worked in fingering weight. And so as for my lighter garments, I'd like to apologize for the makeup. I try, I've been trying them on, getting them photographed and everything. And I need to wash them now that it's getting warmer. So this is the Nandi top. So it's got this slip stitch lace pattern at the at the yoke. So um, when I was working on this one, I didn't want the to do some short rows right at the top and disrupt this pattern. And it's the same with the pullover as well. The pattern starts right at the top. And the difference between the two, just in case you're curious, is that um, the pullover is worked in fingering weight yarn. I knit it in Nurturing Fibers uh, Super Twist Sock and the color is maple and then this is worked in DK weight so the summer top is worked in DK weight yarn and I used Nurturing Fibers Eco Cotton and the color is vanilla so um, with the other top the neckline was folded it was just a uh, reverse stocking it and here I used some ribbing and the body is plain stocking it and I think on the pullover there was a gutter, no, not a gutter, a reverse docking it stitch going down to create a side seam. So that's the difference between the two. It's a totally different um, weight, yarn weight, and uh, there are some differences in the body, uh, in knitting the body, and the neck bend as well, and the bottom bend. So this is worked in DK weight yarn, and it's a very simple one, and it was quite quick to knit. And I generally don't make my tops quite short, but um, I wanted this to be suitable for wearing with skirts because I noticed that in the summer I normally wear skirts. And I think you can even put this on top of a sleeveless dress or something, just wear it on top. It will really work very well. So it's the Nandi top. And I used uh, four millimeter needles on this one. So um, if you'll notice, for my summer tops this year, I did circular um, yokes because last year when I did my summer tops, I had focused mainly on drop sleeves and uh, short sleeve tops like the Naleli top and the Bina top. So this year I wanted something a little different, hence the circular yoke tops. The one has lace and the other one has got a very simple color work motif. And, uh, let me just mention something before I move on from these tops. So um, you'll notice that for this top, there was a very tiny little colorwork bend. So with the summer patterns, I try to avoid some all over colorwork, particularly if it's going to be in a decay weight like this. Maybe if it was fingering, I could have a bit more colorwork, but with decay weight, I try to make it very minimal so that it doesn't get too hot. So that was the motivation with a, doing a very simple color work uh, motif that takes very little space in the design. And then um, the next one that I have is also, this one has also been published. 
this is the mufunwa top so mufunwa means the one we love because this is a very simple sleeveless summer top it's got some sleeve shaping here and a simple neck shaping some twisted rib and some broad uh, stripes so um with this one i wanted a simple top that was brass strip friendly that you can just throw on top of everything so as you can see i'll include some photos i've worn it with pants i've also worn it with a skirt so it just blends well with the wardrobe and it's also in a fun one to knit it's worked in decay weight yarn and this is nurturing fibers eco cotton olive and vanilla so the off-white is the vanilla and the green is the olive so it's also quite a simple one that fits very well in the wardrobe so it's also been published already so uh, on these patterns that i've spoken about some of them are still not yet published i'll talk about them at the end of the video and then the next one that we have is the twin tinswalo top this is currently being tested and the name tinswalo means joy because it brought me so much joy to knit this and to finally wait and i really love the way it looks so it's also a top down summer top and it's also brass strap friendly so um on the pattern i also included instructions to make this section much lower i made mine quite high because i didn't want uh, the bra showing in the underarm when you lift your arm up so um you can also make this a bit lower or higher depending on your preference because i know some people don't want tops that fit much closer to the underarm in the summer i generally do not mind so the neck is a bit wider and it's more open because i wanted a more relaxed fit and look but my favorite feature on this top are these side panels so it's a much longer one just starting from the underarm to the um to the hem it's all it's about 20 inches or so so as you can see this top has got um some reverse stock in it so all the stitches that were cast on for the underarm are worked in reverse stock in it and once you get under the bust you start working the increases so it flares out like this i'll show a photo of the top whilst i'm wearing it so it can make a bit more sense so it's the same on both sides so this is quite an interesting one as well so every year i generally try to design a long summer top i've done the namisa top i've done the luanda and i've done the leslie t in the past so i love these long tops that you can just throw on top of jeans or slim pants and they are much longer and comfortable so this year i did the tinswalo and i'm really loving the length and the whole fit of the top so i worked on this using african expression sole and the color is 7039 m so this is a mild uh, yarn it's very lovely by uh, african expressions so it's a blend of pink and beige so it's 7039 they've got quite a wide range of colors so for those that are in south africa that's quite a nice uh, option so there's one tester who did this pattern in and did some really thick stripes it was really nice and i would like to share that with you as well soon so there are two more patterns here okay this little one is the sugar show looks like this okay so it's diamond shaped uh, i was folding it so it doesn't look so great at the moment but i'll also include some photos so it starts from one point and it is worked all the way to the center with increases and then decreases are worked all the way to the other point so the increases are well hidden you don't actually get to see them it's quite a fun and relaxing and very easy pattern and it works really fast because once you get to the large number of stitches at the center 
you start decreasing. So it also works pretty fast. And um, you've got this simple striped pattern. Let me bring it much closer. And the eyelets. So these eyelets are double yarn overs because I wanted them to be more open than, you know, the regular single yarn over. So you can see here. And this one is knit with Naughty Habits. Um, let me check the name before I say something wrong. It's Naughty Habits, Merino Four Ply Light Fingering, and the color is Fields of Gold. It's a very nice light fingering weight, and, and it's quite long because I think it's about 400 meters long. And I think if you use a regular fingering yarn, not a light fingering, you can still go up a needle size because I used a 3.25 millimeter needle on this one. I initially started with a 3.5, but I didn't like the fabric I was creating. It was too loose and I wanted some very smooth finish and I did this one. So as you can see, I really love working on one skein shawls because they introduce color into the wardrobe. You may not necessarily work with some very light colored yarn, some very bright colored yarn for a full garment, but it's a very nice addition. So even if I was to add it to this outfit, I think it would add some nice color there. Um, just like the New Town shawl, I also had one skein and I wanted to do something with it. And it was a very large skein and I did that shawl and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So this is the Fluga shawl. The name Fluga means be unique, be different, stand out. So it's a fun one and that's how it's meant to be worn. You know, you gotta stand out have this bright, beautiful, colorful show. And one thing that I'd like to mention, I really love wine skein shawls. Um, I've noticed that I find much larger shawls a bit overwhelming. So I normally prefer the single skein ones. And uh, truth be told, our winters are not really that cold. With this show, you can get really reasonably warm. So it's not something that we really need. I know there are people who won't wear this in their winter depending on your location but where we are it, it will work out just fine and then the last item that i have and that is uh, number 10 are the diamond walk socks so these are the diamond walk socks worked from the cuff down with a folded uh, cuff because I, I wanted some extra comfort and i i really don't have any other reason but it starts off with some uh, tubular cast on. And I really love this type of cast on, particularly when you're going to fold um, your knits, whether it's the, uh, the brim of the head or the cuff of the socks, because it looks very neat on either side. Unlike a regular cast on, if you were to fold it, then it won't look so good on the side. But anyway, I like this type of cast on. And I used the same... Uh, yarn that I, I was using for the diamond walk uh, show and so I'm using African Expressions Charmed is the undyed version of their fingering weight yarn and then I'm also using the zipper ball crazy and I think this is Domino 2100 I, I think that's the name of the color it's just black and some light gray it's a it's a very neutral ball of yarn and I love the look of it so i used this for the socks and this very simple slip stitch pattern um it just shows off the yarn beautifully and there's some striping at the bottom of the foot of course so i did a short row heel and it blends very well with the pattern as you can see so um this is one of the patterns that will be coming out in the next few weeks no not the next few weeks actually early next week or later this week I'm just finalizing and the testing on most of them has been done so I showed 10 patterns and only five have been published already so the other five will come as an ebook and um, they will also be available as individual patterns so I, I, I had all of them somehow getting tested and being done at the same time so I decided to also create an ebook so that if someone is interested in most of the patterns they can knit them at the same time so the five patterns that are going to be in the ebook are the diamond walk socks the nylon vest 
the valley top, Tinswalo, and the Sugar Shawl. So there's a little bit of everything. There's a shawl, a pair of socks, a vest, a tea, a tea with a bit of some sleeves, and a sleeveless top. So the patterns will be available on Etsy and Ravelry. And I would like to suggest that you sign up for the newsletter as well. Because what I normally do with the newsletter subscribers is that I give newsletter subscribers double the initial discount that is offered for everyone. For instance, if the pattern is 10% off for every person out there, the subscribers get 20% off. And if it's 20% off, subscribers get 40% off. So I'll be happy to have you as a subscriber and you definitely won't be missing any new launches because every time I launch a new pattern, there is a newsletter that goes out. So um, thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe because I'll be sharing my fall and my winter design inspirations soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.